Hello and uh, welcome back to my channel. So I know I haven't been vlogging for a while, but um, anyway, I realized something the other day. It has been exactly one year since I got my idiopathic intracranial hypertension. I was diagnosed the 12th of October last year, 2022. And it's been a rocky road to say the least. So I thought, why not do a reflection video about uh, my last year and my experiences? So I'm going to be 100% honest here. The last year has been the most difficult year in my entire life, no doubt about it. Let's just be completely transparent about that because this disease changed my life completely and I had to learn to know my body again and I really need to listen to my symptoms and everything like that and uh, in the beginning everything was so blurry I didn't know anything about the disease I just knew that my body was reacting in a very very strange way and it was truly horrifying sometimes and I just had that need to talk so much about this disease and my condition, but I didn't have anyone to turn to that really understand the disease. I of course spoke to my uh, boss about it and to my friends and to my family, but no one knew anything about the disease because it was such a rare disease. Remember it affects about one per 100,000 people but after a while, I understood that, uh, of course, that people are not going to give me the support that I wanted because they don't know about the disease. So that's understandable because it's such, such a rare disease. But anyway, when I realized that, I sort of, um, it sort of got better for me. I don't really remember that much from the first, uh, let's say, six or seven months of this disease. I remember that I had a disease and that it was a very tough and rough time for me. And I remember some things like uh, that my nephew was born and stuff like that, but uh, it's just sort of very, very blurry. And that is because so much was going on within my body and within my process of uh, understanding the disease and just everything. And I gotta say that I am still in the process of learning to understand my disease and my body. And I think that is a, a continuing evolving process that is going to continue for the rest of my life. But I at least sort of know the base of my condition now and I have something that I can continue to work on and for those of you that are newly diagnosed with IOH you will understand your disease and your body just be prepared that it is time consuming and it will drain a lot of energy from you in the beginning but you will get there so there are things that I know helps me. So for example, I am a very sound sensitive sometimes and sometimes not. But I always bring earplugs that I can put in my ears. And I always have them in my backpack and I always have them at home. And whenever a situation occurs when I feel that I need to block sound, I just put them on and uh, there's no problem. Of course, I can't have them on at all situations. It is impossible for me to have them at work. So in that case, I just have to accept it. But anyway, I have them with me at all times. And uh, something else that I uh, always bring with me is uh, paracetamol because I can have headaches that uh, can just come and go like that. Sometimes I don't have headaches for uh, weeks, but then it just comes like this. 
and headache can be very sharp and it can be not so sharp. So I always bring some paracetamol with me and that often takes away my headache pain, not always. And then I just accept that it is. And uh, sometimes sleeping helps with my headaches. And the next part that I'm going to talk about is something that might sound very obvious for those of you that do not have a chronic disease. But for those of us that do have a chronic disease, you will understand what I'm talking about. Regular eating habits with uh, good food is just so important for me because I really need to have those vitamins and uh, minerals and everything like that. And it needs to be regular because if I go hungry, I will have more symptoms. If you like this video, please hit the like button uh, or share the video, leave a comment. Um, it really helps me spreading knowledge about this disease to others and also spreading my story to others. So I sort of feel that my body is uh, using more energy than I did uh, before I got my diagnosis. This is not something that I, I have read in any papers or something like that, but uh, that's just my experience and my opinions because I do get more symptoms if I have eaten badly or not at all. So I am sticking to regular eating habits and uh, also regular sleeping habits is also so important because if I don't sleep well for one night, my brain goes totally nuts. I get all kinds of symptoms like headaches. Um, I feel that uh, I get more blurry vision and uh, I get this really strong fatigue, tiredness, which is by the way, something else than just regular tiredness. It is really, really draining energy and your basically your body and mind doesn't work at all. That's just how to put it nicely. So, eat well, sleep well. It's not going to solve all of your symptoms, but it will get your symptoms to be better. At least for, that is my experience. And uh, something else that um, I need to, to talk about is uh, this disease is demanding for your work. At least it is for my work. So I have made some adaptations at my work together with my boss and my uh, workmates know about it. I'm not going to talk about it, what kind of adaptions I have made because it, the video will just be too long and too uninteresting for you because that is, it's such a special place in the operating theater. So if I start to talk about the adaptations, uh, you will probably not understand because in order to understand how the theater care works, you need to work in it because it, there is truly no other workplace like the OR. I know I just used the abbreviation OR, but that just basically means operating room or theater care. So just bear in mind with that. And something else that I have starting to do is regular physical exercise, like going to the gym or going out for a run or just going out for a walk. It's so positive for your health in so many ways. I mean, it's good for your heart. It's, it is good for your brain and it, it is just good in so many ways. And I feel that if we look in a broader picture, my health has really benefited from uh, regular physical exercise so that is of course something that i'm going to continue with but i just want to mention one thing and that is when i have a really really strong irh headache when it feels like my head is about to blow up i can go for a walk or just do some lighter physical activity but uh, going out for a run or going to the gym is just completely out of the question because that will make my headache worse. But when I have that headache, I know that is, 
that's the case, that is what I have to deal with and I sort of have to just accept it. And uh, speaking of the fatigue that I mentioned earlier, it is just so energy draining when that happens because that is just not um, normal tiredness. It is basically your brain is shutting down and your body is also shutting down and that drains a lot of energy. And uh, I sort of have to understand when I can be more on and do stuff and really be active and uh, so on. And I also need to understand when I need to be more off, when I will really need to just be at home in my bed or couch and just do nothing else than like reading a book and watching TV because that is just basically what you brain can handle at that time and uh, this is difficult to understand because that fatigue can just hit you like this but um, I'm still learning it it's probably a process that will continue for many many years and it's just how it is and I'm doing so much better on that front if I compare to one year ago and speaking of uh, mental health, I, I had a lot of panic attacks one year ago. I basically have like zero panic attacks now and I got help for that. And I believe those panic attacks are related to my IIH. I also was diagnosed with a depression when, not when I got my IIH diagnosis, but uh about six months before that and I do believe that that was linked to the high pressure within my brain because just that just probably caused a lot of things with uh, my uh, hormones and I'm still on medication for the depression but uh, oh my god it's just such a big difference I was in a black hole for one year ago I'm not that now I am happy, I want to do things, I can go to work and have fun and my mood is just so much better and that's a very positive thing to end this vlog about.